be very candid with you. One of my favorite Americans is on the line with me. He is also a candidate for President of the United States, Vivek Rabaswamy. Gotten to meet him on a number of occasions at PragerU events. And I am very impressed with this man. And it is good to talk to him about anything. We'll talk about what is going on right now. Vivek, welcome back to the Dennis Prager Show. Dennis, it's good to be back. How are you? Well, my answer for about three years has been better than my country. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I can feel you on that, Dennis, because you, you're, you speak truth, and you live a life of purpose and meaning as an individual. But as a nation, we have lost our sense of purpose, and so that makes a lot of sense to me. And you take a day like today – the day after a presidential candidate and former president of the United States was arrested and arraigned on the back of politicized charges. And this is someone I'm running against, by the way. That is a shame and a stain on our nation. But I am sick and tired of just complaining about the problem. I think it's time that we rise to the occasion and deliver solutions. And that is what I'm pledging to do and I have some ideas on how to do it. I believe you could, to be perfectly honest. You know, you gave the, uh, the obviously one of the most thoughtful responses to a line I give to many guests when they ask me how I am. It's the American way of saying hello, how are you? And I say better than my country, and they laugh. And it's worthy. It's meant. It's meant to elicit a laugh. It's a, it's a dark laugh, but it's a laugh. But you you've thought you've thought this through. Uh, did you, by any chance, and I don't expect that you did, but did you happen to? Uh, see or just even be aware of what the president of El Salvador said about what uh, was done to Donald Trump? I did not. I saw the president of Mexico, but not El Salvador, no. Oh, what did the president of Mexico say? He said it was a politicized prosecution and they're trying to get Trump not to run because they want Biden to win the election. So that was that was what Obrador had to say. Really? That is yes. fascinating. The yes. president of I did El Salvador. The, the, I did not yeah. That. Oh, all right. So I'll just tell you the president of El Salvador said entirely accurately that if this happened in any other country, we we would dismiss that country as as being a free country, as a democracy, and that the United States mm-hmm. cannot preach democracy anymore because it, it's not practicing its values. That's right. I mean, if the United, and you know what's different though is if that other country gets dismissed, that's fine. The rest of the world still has a beacon of light to look to, which is the United States. But when the United States itself behaves that way, that's not only the death of the United States, it's a death of hope in the free world as we know it. But I am not at the place of no return, Dennis. As bad and as dark as this is, the moment is that we live in, I still believe that with leadership, with moral conviction, and I think that's something we're missing in the conservative movement today, But with moral authority and moral conviction, that is why I want to take the American revival, the America first agenda, even further than Donald Trump did. And he is himself the victim of it today. But the point is, as badly as I do feel for him, I feel more badly for us as a nation to watch this happen in front of our eyes. And I think that we need a leader who's able to go the distance to actually dismantle this toxic administrative state and administrative police state that's responsible for where we are today. And we need the spine and moral authority and conviction to actually do it. I'm happy to tell you about it, but I think it's going to involve shutting down agencies. I think it's going to involve pardoning people who have been the victims of these politicized crimes. That includes Donald Trump, by the way. I just published in the Wall Street Journal about how I'll do this as president. But I think it's going to require taking some controversial steps, even radical steps, they will say, But I think we can unify the country by doing it if we're doing it based on first principles and moral authority rather than just grievance and vengeance and partisanship. I tell you, when I hear you speak, you're batting almost a thousand in my in my opinion. And uh, it it is a joy to hear that. What would you dismantle as an example, the, the Department of Education, the EPA? What would you dismantle? So I've said we need this. There's certain agencies we have to just shut down that have to stay shut down. The Department of Education is on that list. It should have never existed. We spend $83 billion a year on a federal agency that is using our money to get local schools across the country to adopt these radical race and gender ideologies. 
it's not just the school boards. It's actually the federal government creating the incentives for those school boards to adopt wokeness. I will shut that down. And by the way, for a quarter of that, less than 25 percent of that $83 billion, we could put two to three armed security guards to actually secure our kids in every public school across this country. And for the remainder of it, you want to talk about underfunded school choice? This is a this is an embarrassment of riches of how much we spend through the U.S. Federal Department of Education. So that's an example of an agency that should have never existed that I'll shut down and should stay shut down. Separately, though, there's agencies that, well, do you need a federal police enforcement power? You do. If you have federal laws, you need some mechanism to enforce them. But when the agency that does it today has become so rotten and corrupt, the only answer then is to shut that agency down. And then you need to rebuild something skeleton from scratch, bare bones from scratch to take its place. And so that's why I've pledged openly. And you know what? People have told me to be very careful about this. I'm here to speak truth regardless. I will shut down the FBI, and we will create new, something new that actually respects the Constitution and the law to take its place rather than viewing the Constitution as a petty inconvenience, which is the culture of today's FBI. It's still, it's still the J. Edgar Hoover building, literally. That's what they walk into today. It's still J. Edgar Hoover's FBI. And again, Dennis, this is not a partisan issue. It shouldn't be at least. It is today, but it shouldn't be. It's on first principles that we don't want to live in a country where, whether it's James Comey or anybody else, Merrick Garland and the DOJ, whoever it is, should not be able to use and weaponize the police administrative state to advance one side's political agenda. And that's something that if we're leading with moral authority rather than vengeance and grievance, it's something I want to reawaken in in our conservative movement, that sense of moral purpose. That allows us to go even further than Trump was able to. That's really where Reagan succeeded. That's where I'm aiming to succeed starting in 2024. Mm. Do you feel that your message is being heard? It is in the narrow places where I'm delivering it, in Iowa, New Hampshire, where we've traveled. I've only been in this presidential race for five weeks. If we're able to do in rooms, what we're doing in rooms of 100 or 200 at a time in places like Iowa and New Hampshire, then I'm convinced we can lead this national revival. And you know what? I will take happily take President Trump, who's a friend, as an advisor along the way. I mean, I think that he took on the administrative state or tried to. I want to learn where he wasn't able to do it so we can actually take this agenda to the next level further than he ever did. But that's that's the question. Can we take what we're doing in rooms of 100 or 200 at a time showing up in person? People come in with one set of views and then they leave, you know, I think converted on. For me, it's not even about me. It's about you know, the America First agenda, it's bigger than any one of us. It's bigger than Donald Trump. It's bigger than me. It's even bigger than the Republican Party. It's about the country. This can at once go further than he ever did and unify the country. That's something people are hungry for. And the question is, does the system on a national scale allow for that message to be delivered nationally? I'm going to do my best. And I'll tell you what I won't do is I won't shape what I have to say and, and compromise or attenuate it. I would rather lose the election than to do that. But yeah, I, be- I believe that about true. you. Yeah. Let me tell you the one. The, let me tell true. you the one area where we might differ, and that is Ukraine. So tell me your stance on Ukraine. So here's here's a depth in in depth view on my Ukraine position. I think foreign policy is all about prioritization. Okay, I think for me the top priorities are declaring independence from communist China, and protecting our own border, including using our military to do it and to address the fentanyl crisis. And I think that we need to focus on that much more than Ukraine. I don't think it's, as here's what I've said, is it's not a top five priority for me. However, here's what I do think, is that doesn't mean that I want Russia to win this war. Here's what I actually think is the real problem. And this gets into some details, but Dennis, I know you like that, so I'm going to do it, which is Poland wants to send Ukraine fighter jets to allow Ukraine to defend itself. Why? Because that's in Poland's interest, and Poland is a U.S. ally. You know why they can't? Germany is stopping them. Germany is getting in the way, and Germany is a big part of the problem. So this is a European issue that Europe should deal with, but the U.S. can deal with through this with diplomacy. And so I think if we use our diplomatic leverage, we have 40,000-some-odd troops in Germany. There's arguably not no good reason for that, but we can use that to say, hey, we're not going to station troops here if you're going to get in the way of one of our other allies, Poland, doing what it needs to do to put Poland first. Meanwhile, we're here putting America first. That's the way I would handle it, is as a matter of prioritization, I don't want to bleed our resources 
I think that's part of what China's doing by actually giving now weapons to, to Russia. They want us to bleed more of our capacity, both in terms of political capital and military capital, on Ukraine ahead of going for Taiwan. 